I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. Actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Zepetic. How many of the incidents in this unusual story? Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Zepetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. This was Linyan's idea. By controlling the minds of our youth, we can eventually control the world. During my nine years with the controlled minds of communism, I saw startling attempts to put Linyan's theory into practice. This is the story of one of those attempts and a mind that refused to be controlled. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Semetic, Undercover Man. Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked Little Boy Red. The Freedom League Camp for Underprivileged Children. Sounds pretty, doesn't it? Inspires the illusion of sun starved kids from the tenements collecting freckles and extra pounds in pure mountain air. Well, it's an illusion, all right. A bright red illusion. The fresh air and freckles are the bait. The kids are the victims. Hooked on the party line and reeled into the coming nest of mental corruption. I was on my way to one of the largest of these youth traps, sent by my red comrades to act as special counselor. I was to learn more about my duties after I reached the camp. It looked pretty pleasant at first. A pastoral setting dotted with tents and rustic cabins. Then I saw the hammer and sickle banner, the high wire fence, and the man at the gate. Just a minute, sir. Stay where you are. Stay where you are, I said. You. Okay, okay. Take it easy. Well, who are you? What do you want here? I'm looking for Daniel Perrin, your camp director. What for? He's expecting me. What's your name? Svetic, Matt Svetic. Oh, just a minute. Somebody named Svetic at the gate. Says Comrade Perrin expects him. Right. Okay. Well, go right in, Comrade Savetic. The big cabin near the ball field. That's the camp headquarters. Oh, thanks. Oh, what about my car? Give me the keys. I'll take care of it. Okay. Here you are. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoy your stay here, Comrade. I headed toward camp headquarters, noticing the neatly clipped lawns, the tidy cabins, the rows of tents pitched with machine-like precision. This was fine, but somehow the orderliness had a cold, impersonal look to it. Something was missing. The laughter of kids having fun, maybe. The informality of summer games. Everything was too neat, too tidy, almost sinister in its silence. As I reached the ball field, I realized that my first impressions might have been all wrong. The teams on the field looked great. The kids played like vest pocket DiMaggio's. It was the top of the ninth, and a skinny 10-year-old slugger was facing the pitcher with blood in his eye. Then the pitch, the swing. Attention camp personnel. Attention camp personnel. All play equipment will be turned into the supply tent immediately. The day lecture in dialectics will begin in 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Strangely enough, there were no signs of protest from these kids. Almost mechanically, they collected the bats, gloves, balls, and responded to the metallic commands of the public address system. And then, another sign of that cold, impersonal communist deficiency. Comrade Svetic, report to camp headquarters without further delay. Comrade Svetic, report to camp headquarters without further delay. Comrade Svetic. Comrade Perrin? Hmm? Ah, Svetic. The gateman announced your arrival some time ago. Where have you been? 
Oh, I just stopped to watch the ball game for a moment. Promptness and obedience are bywords here at Freedom League Camp. Counselors are expected to set the example for the boys. Yes, comrade. Don't forget it. Now then, you have your orders? Well, just that I'm to be a special counselor, nothing more. All right, sit down. Sit down. Thanks. Does the name Samuel Kaufman mean anything to you? Kaufman? Oh, sure, he's a military attaché from... Exactly. His government is a glowing example of the glories of communism. Kaufman has been a trusted official for years, a good representative of the Communist International, until recently. He's, he's been on duty here in America for quite a while, hasn't he? Yes, too long. He's been swayed by the soft life of the bourgeoisie. We have proof that Samuel Kaufman intends to become a traitor to the party. I, I don't quite understand this. How do you know he intends to turn traitor? Simple. He wrote a letter to his wife stating his views. It's in his own handwriting. You've seen the letter? Naturally. It's in the party files. But as I say, steps have been taken to make Kaufman reconsider his plans. He hasn't become an American citizen, has he? No, which makes it easier for us to deal with him. Just how are we dealing with him? Kaufman has a son, Johann, an intelligent, well-mannered boy, about 13. We had him brought to the camp this morning. When Kaufman realizes that his son is in custody here at Freedom League Camp... Well, just a minute, comrade. These phrases had him brought here in custody. Sounds like you kidnapped the boy. A kidnap is an unfortunate word, Cedric. See to it that our guest does not leave the camp. You mean I was sent up here to guard a kidnapped boy? For the time being, that's your job. Dismissed? Now, look, I'm not... Dismissed? As simple as that. Hold a man's son as hostage until the man bows to the commie demands. All part of the red routine. But was it just routine to send me 55 miles to guard a 13-year-old prisoner? There must have been other sickening chores in store for me. But what were they? And the boy, what was in store for him? Johann was in his tent, our tent, huddled at the far end of his cot, sobbing softly. He was a sensitive-looking kid, small for his age, neatly dressed in a well-tailored brown suit. His trim appearance was in direct contrast to the disheveled, lop-eared, brown-and-white pup he held on his lap. Both the boy and the dog looked startled when I entered the tent. How... how do you do, sir? Hi, Johan. My name's Matt. Looks like we've both been assigned to this tent. Yes, sir. Hope you don't snore at night. No, sir. Good. How about the pup? Nikolai is quiet, sir. He is a good dog. He is, huh? Hi, boy. Hey, uh, Johan. Yes, sir? This Nikolai, he's a... <laughs> he's a her. Yes, sir. He, my... My father always tells me that, too. Yeah, no, this is nothing to cry about. Yeah, now, come on. No need for tears around here. Here, blow. Thank you, sir. Okay, now? I am sorry... Sir, hmm? may I ask you something? Sure. How long am I to stay here? My father, he will be worried about me. I, I did not say goodbye. Oh. Well, uh, that's all been taken care of, Johan. If you like, you can send him a postcard later. Say, how about taking a walk around the camp with me? Get acquainted with the kids and... No, thank you, sir. Matt. Matt? Might as well have some fun while we're here, son. <laughs> Looks like we're stuck with each other for you know, a little while. Oh, Matt, I want to go home. I do not like it here. Uh, Please, I have some money. Let me go. You can't tell them I slipped out while you were sleeping. Oh, Matt, please. No, oh, Johan, I can't. <laughs> What's the matter? I, I know how you feel, and I'd, I'd like to help you, really. <laughs> Hey, what, what... Your face, your face, Matt. You look so worried, so concerned for me. Hey, now wait a minute. What, what's all this about? What... He was funny, huh, Nikolai? He was almost believing, my dear. Believing? You mean all that crying, his tears, was just a gag? An act? Do not be angry, comrade. Comrade? Of course. We are friends, Matt. Comrades. I know I can trust you now. <laughs> you look so funny. I get it. You were putting me to the test, is that it? And I fooled you too, did I not? Yeah. 
Yeah, you had me fooled all right. What about your father? Are you really worried about him, or was that an act, too? Sentimentality is for the weak, is it not? My first loyalty is to the party. I proved that with the letter. What letter? Why, well, my father's letter to my mother. You mean you turned that letter over to the party? Reported your own father to you me? You seem so surprised, comrade. It was my duty. I am sure you would want your son to do the same thing. Would you not? Comrade Finnick, report to camp headquarters. Comrade Finnick, report to camp headquarters. Comrade Finnick. Are you uh, getting on well with our little guest, Finnick? Yeah, great. Listen, Comrade Perrin, that kid doesn't need a guard. He's perfectly happy up here. A good, loyal party worker. He even sacrificed his father to the court. True, true. But children are unpredictable. We can't risk losing him now. Which brings us to the main reason you're here. Oh? Moscow wants Samuel Kaufman to take the next boat home. When he returns to his homeland, of course, he'll be treated in the prescribed manner for traitors. I see. And the boy, Johan. He'll be returned to his father only when Kaufman boards the ship. Not before. They'll sail together. Here, the details are listed right here. Study them carefully. You mean I'm to present the party's case to Kaufman? Exactly. You are to convince Kaufman that he has no choice. If he wants his son back, he must accept our terms. Oh, wait a minute. Let's be realistic about this. Johan has been a pretty treacherous son. That's a matter of values, of course. Sure, but by Kaufman's values... It's treachery. His own son has reported him to the party. That's true, true. The boy prefers the party to his parents. Do you suppose Kalsman would want his boy back? That, comrade, is why you've been chosen for the job. You must be very, very persuasive. Hmm. And if I can't convince Kalsman? If we lose control of Kalsman, it can be disastrous to our cause. The party is placing its welfare in your hands, Fetic. Failure on your part is bound to be considered a form of treason... Need I say more? No, comrade. You've said enough. Now back to Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Sabatic. And I was a communist for the FBI. And the second act of our story. The diabolical hospitality of the communists. Welcome to the party, but don't try to leave. If they couldn't keep Kalsman, they'd see to it that he lost his son. The FBI could have settled this case quickly, but how can I get to them? The only phone at the camp where we could call outside was an antique wall instrument in the back room of Comrade Perrin's headquarters cabin. I had to figure some way to get off the campground. I worried about it for hours and then returned to Perrin's office. Well, Fedick, what now? About this Kalsman project, Comrade Perrin. Can I count on you to help me? Naturally. Good. Kalsman doesn't know we have his son here at the camp, does he? Not yet. Then I'd like you to let him know immediately. A uh, short... A curt note would be most effective. A note for me? Why me? You're handling this. Sure, I'm, I'm handling this, but Kalsman knows you. He knows you rank high among the party leaders. Chances are he doesn't even know my name. Well, you're probably right. A note from you could get action fast. He'd realize we mean business. All right. What shall I say? Mm, let's see. How far away from the closest town? There's a little village about six miles from here. Any hotels there? Just one. The Pine Top Lodge. Why? Tell Cosman that you're holding his son as hostage. If he wants his boy back, he's to register at the Pine Top Lodge by Wednesday noon. I'll contact him there. Good, good. Simple and to the point. I'll send the note special delivery immediately. There was no turning back now. I was in it up to my ears. If Cosman had any love for his son at all, he'd bow to the commie terms. I couldn't let Cosman be sent back to his homeland. But as long as Johan remained a willing captive of the Reds, there was no way to prevent it. Maybe I was just being naive or desperate. But I thought I'd try to appeal to Johan's human qualities. Maybe I could stir up enough emotion in him to make him want to get away from the camp. 
He might even want me to help him get away. <laughs> Look, Matt, it's Nikolai is running to beg for food. Hot Nikolai up. <laughs> a good dog. There, eat it all. That's quite a few meat scraps you've got there. From my supper tonight. I save scraps from Nikolai every night. Look, Johan, your father is coming here. He'll be here Wednesday. I'll try to get him a visitor's pass. Father here? He will be unhappy. He does not approve of our beliefs. You, you don't want to see him? Comrade, my father is a traitor. Why should I bother with him? He... Look, look Matt. Nikolai is begging again. But she learned so fast. Yeah. Now listen, Buster, and listen hard. Your father's in trouble. You got him into trouble. As long as you're a prisoner here, he hasn't got a chance. Doesn't that bother you at all? <laughs> oh, Matt, you cannot fool me. You're testing me now, aren't you? <laughs> Do I pass the test, Matt? Are we still comrades? Yeah, you passed the test, all right. You're at the head of the class. <laughs> But, Mr. Svetik, I did not come to compromise. I want my son. What you fail to see, Kalsman, is that you haven't any choice. No choice at all. Your government bought your tickets for you, right? Yes, yes, of course they did, but... Then you have no complaints. You're getting off easy. You're being sent back home. I see. And what of Johan? What has happened to my son? Your son is a true party worker. He didn't even let his own father stand between him and his loyalty to our cause. Yes, I, I know about the letter. But I cannot hold him responsible for this sort of act. I, I am the responsible one. I taught him to be like he is. You still want him back? Johann is my son, Svetik. I've made terrible mistakes as a man and as a father. I just want him with me again. Please, what must I do to get him back? The motor ship Gregor leaves New York on Friday. Your embassy has reservations for you. To win my son, I lose my freedom. Perhaps, perhaps this is my atonement. What of Johan? He'll sail with you. That is, if you still want to go through with this. Friday, Svetik. Friday. I will have my boy again. <laughs> Osman looked ten years older when he left the hotel, and I was responsible for his agony. If I let him board that ship for his homeland, I'd be more than just a commie torture master. I'd be a murderer, too. Here you are, operator. Murdoch, this is Red Sea. I've just got a minute. Okay, Matt. Let's hear it. Samuel Kalsman's son is a hostage at Freedom League camp. Where are you? I'm about six miles from the camp. Oh, well, we'll come up and get the boy. No, 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 wait. If the FBI showed up, they'd suspect something. I'd be on the spot. I can't explain the complications now. What should we do? Send someone up here, crews in the area around the camp. I'll try to get the kid off the campground somehow. And you want us to pick him up, that it? Yeah, that's right. And be patient. It may take a while, but I'll figure some way to get the kid out of there. If I can't get to you by phone, I'll, I'll tip off the cruising car somehow. If nothing else, the trip to the village did give me a chance to contact the FBI field office. But now I had to smuggle Johan out of the camp before Kalsman boarded the ship on Friday, whether Johan liked it or not. It was dark when I got back to the camp, a knife as black as my mood. I was rounding the rear corner of the mess hall on my way back to the tent when... Hey, who's back there? Hey, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on here. Here. Ah, hold still. You're not going to get hurt. Yeah, now, what's the big idea? Well, what do you know? What were you doing in the kitchen, yo, huh? Oh, man. Oh, please, Matt, don't tell them. Don't turn me in for discipline. Yeah, calm down. What's this all about? I just wanted more food for Nikolai, Matt. Nothing else. They will not give me dog food. They will not give me extra scraps. My dog is hungry, Matt. By what party order are you permitted to own that dog at all? I wanted to ask you that before. 
Nicola has mine, Matt. She likes me. She is my dog. Sure, sure, your dog. And you steal food from the mouths of vital party workers to feed a useless mutt. Comrade, the party has no use for any being that cannot further the cause. Nikolai has nothing to do with our cause. Exactly. What are you going to do? Get back to your tent. What are you going to do to Nikolai? Just what's expected of me. First thing in the morning. Matt. Matt. Are you awake? Hmm? Oh, no. Please, Matt. What will you do to Nikolai? Oh, for Pete's sake. Go to sleep, you have. It's late. You must tell me, Matt. What will you do to my dog? I guess you'll have to be liquidated. Matt. Oh, go to sleep. You cannot kill Nikolai. I, I never had an animal before. He likes me, Matt. He... Well, it's fine talk for a party member. Bring Nikolai down to the lake before breakfast. He can help me drown her. I fought to stay awake then, hoping to see my plan take effect. Then, hours later, I floated out of a light doze to see Johan dressing rapidly in the pre-dawn gloom. In a moment, he scooped up his dog and ducked through the tent flap. I lay on my cot, waiting giving him time to clear. Five minutes. Ten minutes. Time enough. I hopped out of bed, put on some clothes, and ran for the phone at camp headquarters to alert the FBI. Perrin's headquarters cabin was dead ahead now. I didn't want to take the chance of being spotted in the front, so I ran to the rear, up the stoop. I was inside the screen door and across the room in a minute, fumbling around for the phone at the wall. Yeah, there it was. Hello? Hello, operator? Hello? Operator? Hello? Who's there? Who's back there? Parent. I hadn't noticed the light under the door. Had no way of knowing he'd been working at his desk in the front room. Here, who's back at... Sake! What are you doing here? What are you doing at that phone? Well, I, I was just... Just trying to call the gateman. Your hand's gone. He's escaped. What? I woke up a while ago, and his cot was empty. Hurry, the, the alarm. Sadly, he can't escape. If we lose him, I'll hold you fully responsible for this. I'll see. Never mind that now. Wake up the camp. Come on. Where's the switch for that loudspeaker of yours? Right over there by the desk. Turn it on. Hurry up. I turned it on all right. I flicked on the power, then twisted the volume control as far as it would go. The louder, the better. I meant for everyone to hear it. Everyone. Okay. Go to it, comrade. You fool, turn down the volume. We'll wake up the whole countryside. That's just what I wanted it to do. If it was loud enough, it might be heard by the FBI men cruising outside the camp. For a while, my hopes were high. Half-dressed, half-awake kids ran through the weed, shouting Johan's name. Confused counselors barked orders at each other, but no one found Johan. A little cheer went up, just outside the gate. A moment later, the report came to Perrin. You and Kaufman had been found. They were holding him at the main gate. for months, Baron. We've been waiting for one little slip. One little reason to come in and get you. Oh, please, please, mister, take me home. Take me away from here. You want to kill Nikolai. It's all right, son. We're going. But I'd like to have a few words with Mr. Perrin first. Me? Why me? What about him? Svetik. What about Svetik? We're interested in you, Perrin. We have other plans for Svetik. <laughs> A 
Maybe you remember it. There were hearings, trials, all sorts of excitement. Especially when Samuel Kalsman told his story and showed the kidnap note signed by Perrin. And when it was all over, there was a picture in the newspapers. You probably saw it. A boy, his father, and a lop-eared brown and white pup together, understanding each other. They had found something communism could never offer, something I could never hope to find as long as I walked the crooked red path, as long as I walked alone. Turn in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews. In the story you just heard, names, dates, and places are fictitious to protect innocent persons. Many of these stories are based on incidents in the life of Matt Svedek, who for nine years worked undercover as a communist for the FBI to help assure that our country will remain free. Next week, another fantastic adventure. Join us then, won't you? (laughs) 